In this video, we will compare shooting with an acrylic dome versus a glass dome. Will I really get better image quality if I go for the more expensive option? Let's see. If you're interested in underwater content, please like and subscribe. This is the right place for you. Today, I'm comparing two Sea Frogs products. The 6 inches acrylic dome that will cost you 195 USD versus the 6 inches glass dome, which goes for 480 USD. Both domes also exist with an 8 inches diameter option, so if you have the budget, bigger might just be better. Quick disclaimer, Seafrog sent me this glass dome for review, but this is not a sponsored video. I just want to really compare the differences because this is something I've been interested in for a while now. I was actually asking Seafrogs for a comparison video or photo so I could assess the differences, but since they didn't really have that type of content available, I suggested to them that I could be the one doing it, and they agreed. So here we are. The photos you will see have been shot with the Sony a7S III, the lens is the Sony Zeiss FE 1635mm f4. All photos were shot at 16mm focal length, the widest possible, in order to really check how the edges behave in terms of distortion, sharpness, and overall image quality. Here are the photos we will go through. As you can see, I shot these photos in a pool, because it was easier to implement for a fair test, bright sky with natural light only, some clouds passing in front of the sun sometimes, but overall a fairly similar light situation in all of these shots. You will see that the camera settings are either identical or very close. I was always aiming at an exposure value reading 0, 0, in order to have a well exposed photo. All these photos are now unedited, straight from the camera, only converted from RAW to JPEG. Okay, now that these technicalities are out of the way, let's compare. On paper, here is what glass and acrylic domes are supposed to give you. Glass dome provides less distortion, less chromatic aberration, less softness on the edges of the frame, it's scratch resistant, I mean, you can still have scratches, but you really need to go hard on them for it to happen, better durability over time, it's heavier, and it's more expensive. When acrylic dome Domes are cheaper, lighter, impact resistant, it's hard to break. It's prone to scratch easily, which is really annoying. Even when you don't really do anything wrong, small scratches start showing here and there over time. It's easy maintenance in the sense that you can polish acrylic dome if you have scratches, although it's never a great process to go through, especially if you're not an expert. Lower overall image quality compared to glass with more distortion, chromatic aberration, and soft edges. So let's put all that to the test and see how much of this is actually true or if they are just promises from brands to get you to spend more. Image number one, on our left the glass dome, on our right the acrylic dome. I don't know if all the details will be obvious in the video you're watching, I invite you to watch this in 4K for better resolution and I also include all these photos in their max resolution in the description. You can download them if you want to have a closer look. I can see that the glass dome gives me overall better clarity. The details on the floor are crisper, the floating lines in the upper part of the image have more details with the glass dome too. Image number two, glass dome on the left again. What is interesting here are the light rays landing on the wall. We can see how much sharper they are with the glass dome. In terms of distortion, I can't really say that I see a big difference with the lines on the wall. Maybe the distortion differences would be more obvious with an 8 inches dome. Not so sure about it since I haven't tested it. You can also see more details on the blue plastic floor at the bottom with the glass dome. It does look softer with the acrylic dome. Regarding the edges, I find that in this situation they both give a much softer edge compared to the middle of the frame. We will see later that the difference on the edges between glass and acrylic is really seen when shooting towards the light source. But here, with the light coming from behind, it's not that obvious. Image number three, this time I'm shooting the floor of the pool with the light coming from behind me. You can actually see my shadow being cast on the left side. If the glass dome photo is slightly crisper, in this situation the difference is less noticeable. Image number four, trying some split photography here. There are quite a lot of details on this photo, so let's zoom in to really see the differences. This is on the left edge of the frame. The focus point was on the moving flags, although when shooting at f9 and f10, a lot more still stays in focus. I think the difference speaks for itself. In a situation where you have a lot of details, everything is so much more sharper with the glass dome, especially the background elements, 
with the blue tents and seats. And this was shot with the Sony a7S III that only has 12 megapixel for photos, which means it's not the best camera for photos crowded with small details. You just don't have enough pixels for great resolution when zooming in. And now the real star of the show with image number five shot against the light. The sun on the acrylic photo is behind a cloud, so it would be unfair to judge the quality of the light rays, even though with my experience shooting light rays with acrylic dome, I can tell you that the ones I see on the glass dome look really good, better than what I'm used to. If we zoom in on the floating line, we can really see how much sharper the elements are. Even the clarity of the water on the surface is so much better. And finally, the topic of chromatic aberration. These blue and red edges you get sometimes on some elements of your photos, especially when shooting against the lights, like in this situation. Look at the flags above the water. The chromatic aberration of the acrylic dome is much more pronounced than with the glass dome, where it's barely noticeable. I wish I would have extra comparison with identical photos taken in the sea to share with you, but I don't have two exact same cameras, lenses and housings to shoot at the same time and give you a fair side-by-side -side rundown. But here are some extra examples shot with the glass dome in seawater with a visibility that was not so great really. And the results for me are really nice. I was still able to keep a lot of sharpness even though there was a lot of plankton and particles in the water. You can see on this example the amount of backscatters I had during this shoot. Overall, I think I can easily conclude that Glass Dome offers superior image quality. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't get really good images with an acrylic dome. I have shot almost all my life with acrylic domes and I was able to get amazing results. But if you have the budget and want to get that extra quality, then I guess now you know what you should be going for. Just a quick few words before ending this video. I'm able to take the time reviewing these products fairly and independently without being sponsored by brands thanks to my own product lines. I created dedicated presets and lots for underwater photos and videos. You can check them out via the links in the description. I've been working with them and fine tuning them for years. I use them every day for my personal work and client works too. They provide great results, make me gain so much time and I share tutorials on how to make the most of them. And if you're looking to learn more about underwater content creation, you can also check my online course where I share everything I learned over the past 10 years. Okay, that's it. Thank you for staying until the end. And if you have any questions, please comment or contact me directly on Instagram.